The Gilbert Perrault 1973-74 OPG number 70 hockey card. Written on the back of the card, only starting his fourth season, Gilles is already one of the top players in the NHL. He won the Lady Bing Trophy for a clean, effective play last season. Top scorer on the Sabres in 1972-73, he also won the Calder Trophy as a Rookie of the Year in 1970-71. A closer look. After an outstanding junior career with the Montreal Junior Canadiens, Gilbert Perrault was the first overall pick by the expansion Buffalo Sabres at the 1970 NHL Amateur Draft. He didn't disappoint. In his rookie 1970-71 season, Perrault scored 38 goals and assisted on 34 for 72 points. Not only did Jill win the Calder in 1970-71, he demolished the competition. He took 57% of the overall votes, while the next man up, Jude Drouin, received 19%. Also in the running were Gilles Villemur, Tom Webster, and Dale Talon. It wasn't just the Calder that this phenomenal first-year player was up for. He came in 13th in the voting for the Hart Trophy as NHL Most Valuable Player, a great distance behind winner Bob Yor. He also placed 5th in the voting for the Lady Bing Trophy, an award he would win in 1972-73. Perot would go on to play 1,191 regular season and 90 Stanley Cup playoff games in the National Hockey League between 1970-71 and 1986-87, all with the Sabres. He surpassed the 100-point plateau twice over his career with 113 in 1975-76 and 106 in 1979-80. Gilbert was inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame in 1990. The Eddie Shack 1958-59 Tops number 30 hockey card. Written on the back of the card, colorful, aggressive freshman tabbed by coaches as likely winner of Rookie Award. A closer look, Eddie Shack had a decent rookie season in 1958-59 with the New York Rangers. He scored 7 goals and assisted on 14 for 21 points over 67 games. His 109 penalty minutes tied him for 5th in the National Hockey League with Pete Gauguin. However, Shaq was not in the running for the Calder Trophy as NHL Rookie of the Year like the back of this 1958-59 Topps hockey card predicted. Instead, the award went to Ralph Backstrom of the Montreal Canadiens. Carl Brewer, Ab McDonald, Charlie Burns, and Norm Johnson were also considered. During the 1959-60 season, Shaq almost became a member of the Detroit Red Wings. A February 1960 trade was in the works to send Eddie and Bill Gadsby to the Motor City for Red Kelly and Billy McNeil, but the trade was voided. At the start of the 1960-61 season, Shaq was shipped instead to the Toronto Maple Leafs for Pat Hannigan and Johnny Wilson. Ironically, Red Kelly, who got in the way of the Detroit trade, ended up with the Maple Leafs for 1960-61 as well. Shaq played 1,047 regular season and 74 playoff games with the Rangers, Maple Leafs, Boston Bruins, Los Angeles Kings, Buffalo Sabres, and Pittsburgh Penguins. He was a member of Stanley Cup winning teams in Toronto. The Derek Sanderson 1967-68 Tops number 33 hockey card. Written on the back of the card, Derek was an all-star in Junior A last season for Niagara Falls Flyers where he scored 41 goals and had 60 assists. Has the talent to make the big step from Junior A to the NHL this year. A closer look, Derek Sanderson led the OHA Junior A with 101 points in 1966-67 earning the Eddie Powers Trophy. He also led in assists with one more than teammate Jim Lorenz. His 41 goals placed him second, 10 behind leader Mickey Redmond of the Peterborough TPTs. Derek also finished second in the league with 193 penalty minutes, just three minutes behind Jim Dory of the London Nationals. Sanderson certainly made the big step to the National Hockey League for the 1967-68 season. He scored 24 goals and assisted on 25 for 49 points with the Boston Bruins and earned the Calder Trophy as NHL Rookie of the Year. Between 1965-66 and 1977-78, Derek appeared in 598 regular season and 56 playoff games in the NHL with the Boston Bruins, New York Rangers, St. Louis Blues, the Vancouver Canucks, and Pittsburgh Penguins. He helped Boston to two Stanley Cup championships. Sanderson also played eight games in the World Hockey Association in 1972-73 with the Philadelphia Blazers. The Brad Park 1972-73 OPG number 114 hockey card. Written on the back of the card, hardly anyone, except for Boston's Bobby Orr, achieved stardom as quickly as Brad. The Rangers grabbed him in an amateur draft in 1966 and he quickly developed into an all-star. He's one of the best in the NHL at clearing the puck and he owns a powerful slap shot from the point. A closer look. Brad Park was a first team all-star defenseman in 1969-70, just his second year in the National Hockey League. He would be selected to the first team four more times during his NHL career and twice was named to the second team. Park was the second overall pick at the 1966 NHL Amateur Draft by the Rangers. 
Point first overall was Barry Gibbs to the Boston Bruins. Brad was drafted out of the Toronto Marlboros in the OHA Junior A. In all, Brad appeared in 1,113 regular season and 161 Stanley Cup playoff games in the NHL between 68-69 and 84-85 with the Rangers, Boston Bruins, and Detroit Red Wings. He was inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame in 1988. The Don Edwards 1977-78 OPG No. 201 Hockey Card Written on the back of the card, the Sabres backup goaltender to Jerry Desjardins for the 1976-77 campaign, he enjoyed a fine rookie season at Buffalo. He saw 1,480 minutes of action in 25 games during the campaign and had two shutouts with an impressive 2.51 goals against average. Had assists in 1975-76 playoffs. Don's last amateur club was the Kitchener Rangers. A closer look. Despite playing 25 games for the Buffalo Sabres in 1976-77, Don Edwards retained his rookie status going into the 1977-78 NHL season. Edwards was no longer in a backup role, appearing in 72 games for the Sabres. He posted a 2.64 goals against average with five shutouts. Backing up Don were Bob Sauvé and Jerry Desjardins. His performance between the pipes in 1977-78 certainly got Edwards a lot of attention. He was fourth in voting for the Hart Trophy as NHL MVP behind Guy Lafleur, Brian Trotche, and Daryl Sittler. In the voting for the Calder Trophy for Rookie of the Year, Don placed third behind Mike Bossy and Barry Beck. Edwards would win the Vezina Trophy in 1979-80, sharing the award with Sauvé. He helped the Scotty Bowman coach Sabres to a second place overall finish during the regular season and led the club to the semi-final in the playoffs before bowing out to the eventual Stanley Cup champion New York Islanders. Don played for the Kitchener Rangers in 1973-74 and 1974-75. In the first season, Kitchener finished first overall and in the second, they finished last. Despite the difference in standings, Edwards was named a first-team All-Star goalie in both campaigns. Seeing his success, Buffalo drafted him in the fifth round of the 1975 NHL Amateur Draft. In all, Edwards played 459 regular season and 42 playoff games in the National Hockey League between 1976-77 and 1985-86 with the Sabres, Calgary Flames, and Toronto Maple Leafs. He posted a career 3.32 goals against average with 16 shutouts. The Doug Harvey 1963-64 Tops number 47 hockey card. Written on the back of the card, all-time defense ace, won Norris Trophy 7 of 10 years, led Rangers into playoffs as rookie coach in 1961-62. Last year he topped all defensemen as scorer after shedding the coach job. A closer look. The Doug Harvey coach New York Rangers qualified for the postseason in 1961-62 for the first time since 1957-58. Unfortunately, the Blue Shirts fell to the Toronto Maple Leafs in six games in the opening round. The team was still a long ways out of a drought that saw them not win a playoff series between 1950-51 and 1969-70. Prior to this dubious streak, the Rangers reached the Stanley Cup Final in 1949-50 before falling to the Detroit Red Wings. Despite his 39 points from the blue line in 1961-62, Doug was left out of the top five for Norris Trophy balloting. The award went to Pierre Pilot of the Chicago Blackhawks with Carl Brewer, Tim Horton, Elmer Vasco, and Bill Gadsby also in the running. In fact, the seven Norris wins noted on the back of this 1963-64 Topps hockey card would be the limit for Harvey. 1963-64 would see Harvey play just 14 games with the Rangers, spending the rest of the season in the AHL with the Quebec Aces, while also seeing time in the CPHL with the St. Paul Rangers. The rest of his NHL career would be sporadic at best, seeing just two games with the Detroit Red Wings in 1966-67, eight playoff games with the St. Louis Blues in 1967-68, and a full season with the Blues in 68-69 before retiring. In all, Doug played in 1,113 regular season and 137 playoff games in the National Hockey League between 1947-48 and 1968-69 with the Montreal Canadiens, New York Rangers, Detroit Red Wings, and St. Louis Blues. He was inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame in 1973. His number two was retired by the Habs in 1985. Bruce Boudreaux 1979-80 OPG number 354 hockey card. Written on the back of the card, Bruce is blessed with the uncanny ability to produce scoring opportunities for the Leafs. A closer look. More known for his decades of coaching in the IHL, ECHL, AHL, and NHL, Bruce Boudreaux was certainly once a player in the National Hockey League. 
Gabby could never quite catch on in the league, however, and played just 141 regular season and nine playoff games in the NHL between 1976-77 and 1985-86 with the Toronto Maple Leafs and Chicago Blackhawks. Boudreaux did have a scoring touch. In his final year of junior hockey with the Toronto Marlboros, 1974-75, Bruce scored 68 and assisted on 97 for 165 points. He tied for the goal-scoring lead with Peter Lee of the Ottawa 67s, two ahead of Dennis Marouk and Mark Napier. He was second in assists, 10 behind Tim Young of the 67s. He led the league in points, earning the Eddie Powers Trophy. In 1987-88, Bruce led the American Hockey League with 116 points playing for the Springfield Indians. This earned him the John B. Sullenberger Trophy. It was third, his third and final time that he would reach the 100-point plateau in the AHL. Boudreau also topped 100 twice in the IHL and once in the CHL. This 1979-80 OPG hockey card was the second and last to feature Boudreau in the NHL. He played just two games for the Maple Leafs that year, spending most of the season with the New Brunswick Hawks in the AHL. The Peter Mahovlich 1976-77 OPG number 15 hockey card. Written on the back of the card, Peter is recognized as one of the top two-way centers in the NHL. He's an outstanding playmaker, excellent defensive player, and a master at winning face-offs. A closer look, Peter Mahovlich definitely had the numbers of an outstanding playmaker. His 82 assists with the Montreal Canadiens in 1974-75 stands as the 55th best helper total in NHL history. Considering 14 of the 54 positions ahead of him belong to Wayne Gretzky, it's a pretty noble mark. That 1974-75 NHL season was one of two with Mahovlich recording over 100 points. His 117 points placed him fifth in the race for the Art Ross Trophy behind Bobby Orr, Phil Esposito, Marcel Dion, and Guy Lafleur. The following season, he totaled 105 points and tied for sixth with John Rattel. Mahovlich played, played one, er, 884 regular season and 88 playoff games in the National Hockey League between 1965-66 and 1980-81 with the Detroit Red Wings, Montreal Canadiens, and Pittsburgh Penguins. Pete appeared in seven of eight games for Team Canada at the 1972 Summit Series against the Soviet Union. The Rod Gilbert 1962-63 Tops number 59 hockey card. Written on the back of the card, slick right wing who was voted MVP of OHA before turning pro last season. Serious back injury sidelined him in first half. He was recalled in playoffs and scored two goals and three assists. A closer look. Rod Gilbert was the Red Tilson Trophy winner in the OHA Junior A in 1960-61, playing for the Guelph Royals. He also led the league in scoring with 103 points on 54 goals and 49 assists over 47 games to earn the Eddie Powers Trophy as the league's top scorer. It was his fourth year with Guelph. The stats shown on the back of the card are actually from Gilbert's time in 1961-62 with the Kitchener-Waterloo Beavers of the EPHL. He did appear in one regular season game with the Rangers that year, along with four, the four playoff games noted in the snippet. New York lost in the opening round of the Toronto Maple Leafs in six games. Rod's injury issues resolved themselves and he was able to put in three consecutive complete seasons from 1962-63 to 1964-65. His 31 points over 70 games in his rookie 1962-63 season did not get him considered for the Calder Trophy. That award went instead to Kent Douglas of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Gilbert played 1,065 regular season and 79 Stanley Cup playoff games in the National Hockey League between 1960-61 and 1977-78, all with the Blue Shirts. Rod was inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame in 1982. His number 7 was retired in 1979 by New York, the first number to ever be sent to the Raptors by the team. The Stan Makita 1969-70 OPG No. 76 hockey card. Written on the back of the card, one of the most prolific scorers in NHL history, Stash is slippery, fast, and elusive. His 1967 hat trick, MVP, scoring championship, and the Lady Bing Trophy. Born in Czechoslovakia, Stan was one of the first to successfully use a curved stick. A closer look. It's interesting that OPG notes that Stan Makita was a Triple Crown winner in 1967, but doesn't note that he repeated the feat in 1968. Despite his point total dropping by 10 from the previous season, Makita won his fourth and final Art Ross Trophy in 1967-68. Again, he would also win the Hart Trophy as NHL MVP and the Lady Bing Trophy. The most underrated fact about Stan's NHL career is the Lady Bing Trophy wins. Makita completely transformed his style of play in the mid-1960s. In 1964-65, he sat 154 penalty minutes during the regular season, placing him 7th in the league and an additional 53 minutes over 14 playoff games. 
By 1966-67, he sat just 12 minutes in penalties and was considered one of the cleanest players in the league. Nikita did discover the curved stick. Stan and teammate Bobby Hull were so successful using it, in fact, that the National Hockey League introduced a new rule in 1970 limiting the curvature of a stick blade to a half inch. Stan Makita appeared in 1,394 regular season and 155 Stanley Cup playoff games in the NHL between 1958-59 and 1979-80, all with the Chicago Blackhawks. His jersey number 21 was, was retired by the Blackhawks in 1980, and Stan was inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame in 1983. The Henri Richard 1973-74 OPG number 87 hockey card. Written on the back of the card, Henri is starting his 19th season with Montreal and is following in the footsteps of his brother, the legendary Rocket Richard. A real hustler and a tireless skater has twice led the NHL in assists. A closer look. It's always mentioned that Henri Richard followed in his brother's footsteps. However, there wasn't a whole lot similar to the playing style of Henri's compared to that of Maurice. In pretty much all of Rocket's full seasons in the National Hockey League, his goals outnumbered his assists. Maurice also had a fiery temper that made sure he was quite familiar with the penalty box. Henri Richard, as noted on the back of this 1973-74 OPG hockey card, was more comfortable setting up goals and scoring them. The pocket rocket led the NHL in assists in both 1957-58 and 1962-63. His highest goal total was a modest 30 in 1959-60. Also not quite a Lady Bing candidate, Henri did his best to stay out of the box. 1973-74 would be the last full season for Richard's illustrious NHL career. He would play for the Habs in 1974-75, but appeared in just 16 games before retiring. Between 1955-56 and 1974-75, Henri played 1,258 regular season and 180 playoff games in the NHL, all with the Montreal Canadiens. Richard was a member of 11 Stanley Cup championship teams in Montreal. No other player in NHL history has equaled that mark. His number 16 was retired by the Habs in 1975, and Henri was inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame in 1979. The Yari Curry 1981-82 OPG number 107 hockey card, written on the back of the card. The Oilers' second leading scorer in 1980-81, Yari was credited with nine power play goals, one game winning goal, and two game tying goals during campaign. A strong skater with an extremely hard shot, he played three years of Division I hockey in Finland. Yari was a member of the Finnish Olympic team in 1980. A closer look. A fourth round pick by the Edmonton Oilers at the 1980 NHL Amateur Draft, Yari Curry was definitely a steal. Although not a contender for the Calder Trophy as NHL Rookie of the Year in 1980-81, his 32 goals and 75 points were outstanding for a first-year player. Curry played seven games for Finland in the 1980 Winter Olympic Games held in Lake Placid, New York. He contributed three points over the seven games as Finland reached the final round before ultimately finishing fourth overall. The same year, Yari helped his country to a silver medal at the 1980 IIHF World Juniors. In the tournament, his 11 points in five games tied him for the scoring lead with Vladimir Krutov of the Soviet Union. 1980-81 was just the start of an amazing National Hockey League career. Curry appeared in 1,251 regular season and 200 playoff games in the NHL between 1980-81 and 1997-98 with the Oilers, Los Angeles Kings, New York Rangers, Anaheim Mighty Ducks, and Colorado Avalanche. Yari's career 601 goals ranks him 20th all-time, just 7 behind Dino Cicerelli. In 2001, the five-time Stanley Cup champion became the first player from Finland to be inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame. The same year, his number 18 was retired by the Edmonton Oilers. The Jacques Plante 1974-75 OPG WHA number 64 hockey card. Written on the back of the card, Jacques is considered one of the greatest goalies in hockey history. He's 46 years old and now working his third playing career. From 52 to 65, he played for Montreal and New York. In 68, he came out of retirement to play five seasons with the Blues, Maple Leafs, and Bruins. Last season, he was coach and GM of the Nordiques. He won the Hart Trophy in 1962 and the Vezina six times. A closer look. Error. On the back of the card, it mentions that Jacques won the Vezina Trophy six times. He actually has his name on the award seven times. However, his final win was with the St. Louis Blues in 1968-69 and is shared with Len Hall. Hall played slightly more games, but Plant's 1.96 goals against average was better than Hall's 2.17. 
For the third reincarnation of Plant's stellar Major League Hockey career, Jacques played just the 1974-75 season for the Oilers in the World Hockey Association. He appeared in 40 games, posting a 3.32 goals against average with a single shutout. Ken Brown and Chris Worthy also spent time between the pipes for Edmonton that year. The team finished fourth in the five-team Canadian division and out of the AFCO World Trophy playoffs. The bright light on the team offensively was rookie star Mike Rogers. Rogers led the team in scoring but ended up being shipped to the New England Whalers midway through the following season. The stats on the back of the card are from 1972-73 when Plant split time between the Toronto Maple Leafs and Boston Bruins. He started the year in Toronto appearing in 32 games before being shipped to Beantown where he finished up playing 8 games as backup to Ed Johnston. The Norm Ullman 1959-60 Tops number 45 hockey card. Written on the back of the card, only 19 when he broke in with the Wings three years ago. Norm enjoyed best campaign last year despite constant shifting of lines. Good playmaker and gifted with hockey sense, he has played the part of a steadying influence even as a youngster. Are pucks treated before a game? Yes, they're put in refrigerators. A closer look. Error. On the back of the card, it has Norm Ullman's hometown as Provo, Saskatchewan. He was born in Provo, but the town is in Alberta. His 24 goals in 1959-60 were a slight improvement over the year before and placed him tied for 10th in the NHL with Bob Polford and Jean-Guy Gendron. Ullman was an incredibly consistent goal scorer with 17 consecutive seasons with at least 20 goals. Norm had five seasons where he topped the 30-goal plateau. His career best came in 1964-65 when he scored 42 goals for the Red Wings. That mark placed him first overall in the National Hockey League, three better than Bobby Hall of the Chicago Blackhawks. Unfortunately, no award for goal scoring would exist for a few more decades. His 83 points that year placed him second in the race for the Art Ross Trophy, four behind Stan Mikita. Over his amazing NHL career, Ullman appeared in 1,410 regular season and 106 playoff games between 1955-56 and 1974-75 with the Red Wings and Toronto Maple Leafs. He scored 490 goals and totaled 1,229 points. His career ended with two seasons in the WHA, 1975-76 and 1976-77 with the Edmonton Oilers. The Gordie Howe 1968-69 OPG No. 29 Hockey Card Written on the back of the card, Pro Hockey's Mr. Everything has done it all, like five scoring championships, three MVP awards, and nine first All-Star teams. He's a supreme hockey player and is still going after 22 years. A closer look. Error. Between 1950-51 and 1962-63, long before this 1968-69 OPG hockey card was published, Gordie Howe won the Art Ross Trophy six times and the Hart Trophy six times. The back of the card states that he'd won the Art Ross five times and the Hart three. Also, prior to the release of this card, Howe was a first-team All-Star ten times, not nine. He would be selected first-team again in 1968-69 and 1969-70. Even after 22 years, the best was yet to come. In 1968-69, Gordie Howe put up career best numbers with 44 goals and 59 assists for 103 points. This put him third in the race for the Art Ross Trophy behind Phil Esposito and Bobby Hall. Interestingly, that year the Detroit Red Wings were coached by Bill Gadsby. As a player, Gadsby started his NHL career in the same year as Howe. 1968-69 was the start of the end for Gordie. His numbers dropped considerably over the next two years and he retired for the first time after the 1970-71 season. However, Howe made a comeback to Major League Hockey in 1973-74 with the Houston Arrows of the WHA and again put up great numbers with 100 points in his first year in the WHA and 102 in 1975-76. The Jim Schoenfeld 1973-74 OPG No. 86 Hockey Card Written on the back of the card, another in the line of top-notch rookies developed by the Sabres. He was the first defenseman chosen in the 1972 amateur draft and the Sabres haven't regretted the choice. A closer look. Jim Schoenfeld was the fifth overall pick at the 1972 NHL amateur draft and indeed the first defenseman selected. Ahead of him were Billy Harris, Jacques Richard, Don Lever and Steve Shutt. Sean Field was drafted out of the Niagara Falls Flyers in the OHA Junior A. In his rookie 1972-73 NHL season, Sean Field showed what his role was as a defensive defenseman. He scored four goals over 66 games, but was fourth in the voting for the Calder Trophy as NHL Rookie of the Year. Steve Vickers took the Calder honors that year with Bill Barber coming in second and Billy Harris third. 
between 1972-73 and 1984-85, Schoenfeld played 719 regular season and 75 Stanley Cup playoff games in the National Hockey League with the Buffalo Sabres, Detroit Red Wings, and Boston Bruins. He was part of a December 2, 1981 blockbuster that also sent Danny Gare, Bob Sove, and Derek Smith to the Red Wings for Mike Foligno, Dale McCourt, and Brent Peterson. The Gila Fleur 1977-78 OPT No. 200 Hockey Card Written on the back of the card Was winner of the Art Ross Trophy for the 1975-76 season Was selected on the NHL First Team All-Star Team in 1974-75 and 1975-76 And was voted to the Fans Team last season Scored 12 goals in 1975 playoffs A closer look an interesting quirk from OPG, they state that Guy Lafleur was the winner of the Art Ross Trophy in 1975-76. Indeed he was, but Lafleur was also the Art Ross winner in 1976-77, the season that this hockey card is supposed to be telling a story about. Guy would go on to win the trophy again in 1977-78. He would also be the 1977-78 Hart Trophy winner. Prior to Lafleur's three consecutive wins, only Gordie Howe and Phil Esposito had won the award three or more times in a row each with four consecutive. Also noted on the front of the card, but not on the back, was his first team All-Star selection in 1976-77. This was the third of an incredible six consecutive seasons for Guy on the first team. Despite his NHL career full of accolades and championships, the 12 goals scored in the 1974-75 playoffs noted on the back of the card were a career best. Those 12 goals were scored in just 11 games with the Habs falling to the Buffalo Sabres in the semi-final. He was the Conn Smythe Trophy winner in 1976-77, but it was his playmaking more than his goal scoring that stood out. He totaled 26 points in 14 games, boosted by his 17 assists. The Harry Hell 1954-55 Tops No. 3 Hockey Card Written on the back of the card, one of the few players to jump from junior hockey to the NHL, Harry is in his third year as a Ranger at the young age of 22. His mates call him Harry the Horse. He starred for the Guelph Ontario Biltmores, winners of the Memorial Cup, before turning to professional hockey. Harry is a good all-around athlete, choosing hockey over football for a career. A closer look. The 1951-52 Guelph Biltmores captured the OHA Junior A Championship, beating the St. Catharines Teepees in the final. Guelph moved on to take out the Montreal Junior Canadiens and earn a trip to the Memorial Cup final. The Biltmores then swept the Regina Pats in four games to capture the national title. Joining Howell on the team were future NHL stars Ron Murphy, Dean Prentice, and Andy Bathgate. Harry Howell played in 1,411 regular season games in the National Hockey League between 1952-53 and 1972-73 with the Rangers, Oakland Seals, and Los Angeles Kings. However, he played in just 38 Stanley Cup playoff games over that time and never was on a team that won a playoff series. 1966-67 was a career year for Harry. His 12 goals and 40 points were both career highs. He was honored with the Norris Trophy as the NHL's top defenseman. The next time someone not named Bobby Orr would win the award would be Dennis Potvin in 1975-76. Hal was also named a first-team All-Star that year. Hal spent three years in the WHA 1973-74 to 1975-76 with the New York Golden Blades, San Diego Mariners, and Calgary Cowboys before retiring as a player. He was inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame in 1979. His jersey number three was retired by the Rangers in 2009. The Ernie Wakeley 1970-71 OPG number 97 hockey card. Written on the back of the card, Ernie combined with Jacques Plante in the Blues Nets last season to be runner-up in the Vezina Trophy race. A stand-up type goalie, Ernie has twice won leading goalkeeper awards 1962-63 and 1963-64 in the CPHL. Last year was his first in the NHL. A closer look. By 1969-70, Ernie Wakeley had been in pro hockey for a full decade. His rookie season in the NHL occurred at the age of 29. The back of this hockey card has a slight error in that it wasn't actually Wakeley's National Hockey League debut. Ernie appeared in a single game with the Montreal Canadiens during the 1962-63 season and another single game with the Habs in 1968-69. Between 1959-60 and 1968-69, Wakeley played for 10 different minor pro teams across four leagues. He was top goaltender in 1962-63 with the Hull Ottawa Canadians in the CPHL and again the following year with the Scotty Bowman coached Omaha Knights. 
In the NHL, Ernie appeared in 113 regular season and 10 playoff games with the Canadians and St. Louis Blues between 1962-63 and 1971-72. In the World Hockey Association, Wakely played 334 regular season and 31 playoff games between 1972-73 and 1978-79 with the Winnipeg Jets, San Diego Mariners, Cincinnati Stingers, Houston Arrows, and Birmingham Bulls. The Allen Stanley 1962-63 Parker's No. 9 Hockey Card A closer look. 1962-63 would be business as usual for Allen Stanley and the Toronto Maple Leafs as the team went on to capture their second of three consecutive Stanley Cup championships. However, Stanley would not make it three in a row when it came to second team All-Star selections. He would get a third and final nod in 1965-66 with the Buds. Alan Stanley would play 1,244 regular season and 109 playoff games in the National Hockey League between 1948-49 and 1968-69 with the New York Rangers, Chicago Blackhawks, Boston Bruins, Toronto Maple Leafs, and Philadelphia Flyers. He helped the Maple Leafs to four Stanley Cup championships in the 1960s. In 1959-60, at the age of 33, Allen was the runner-up for the Norris Trophy behind Doug Harvey of the Montreal Canadiens and just ahead of Marcel Pronovo of the Detroit Red Wings. He would never win the award as best defenseman. Allen was inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame in 1981. The Bronco Horvath 1958-59 Tops number 35 Hockey Card Written on the back of the card, Quick wrist shot makes him dangerous around nets. Closer look. Bronco Horvath had an injury-shortened season in 1958-59. However, he came back strong in 1959-60 with a career year. Horvath tied Bobby Hull of the Chicago Blackhawks for the NHL lead in goal scoring with 39. He fell one point short of tying Hull for the Art Ross Trophy. Originally property of the Detroit Red Wings, if Horvath had appeared in one game with the Wings, he would have played for all six original six teams during his National Hockey League career. After leading the WHL with 110 points in 1954-55 while playing with Detroit's affiliate, the Edmonton Flyers, he was traded to the New York Rangers. His National Hockey League journey was mostly spent with the Boston Bruins, but he also spent time with the Chicago Blackhawks and Toronto Maple Leafs, along with a single game with the Montreal Canadiens. His NHL career was revived for a short time in 1967-68 after nearly five years in the minors when he played 14 games for the Minnesota North Stars, his last games in the league. Horvath went on to the Stanley Cup Final in 1957-58 with the Boston Bruins, losing to the Montreal Canadiens. He also went to the final with the Chicago Blackhawks in 1961-62, losing to the Toronto Maple Leafs. In the American Hockey League, he helped the Rochester Americans to three Calder Cup championships. He was inducted into the AHL Hall of Fame in 2015. The Danny Gare 1976-77 OPG No. 222 Hockey Card Written on the back of the card, a 50-goal scorer in only his second year of NHL play, he's a very fast skater and led the Sabres with nine game-winning goals last year. Danny scored on his very first shot on goal in the NHL. A closer look. Danny did score 50 goals in 1975-76, just his second season in the National Hockey League. This tied him for fifth spot in the league with Bill Barber of the Philadelphia Flyers, 11 goals behind leader Reg Leach. Gare would surpass the 50-goal plateau one more time during his NHL career. In 1979-80, he scored 56 goals, which would put him in a three-way tie for the league lead with Blaine Stoughton of the Hartford Whalers and Charlie Simmer of the Los Angeles Kings. Not much time was wasted getting his first NHL goal. On October 10, 1974, the Boston Bruins were in town to face the Sabres at the Buffalo Memorial Auditorium. Just 18 seconds into the game, Gare scored with assists going to Craig Ramsey and Don Luce. Danny also added an assist for a hell of an NHL debut. Buffalo came out on top 9-5 in the game. Gilles Gilbert had a rough night between the pipes for the Bruins. This goal still stands today as the second fastest goal to start an NHL career. The fastest is 15 seconds by Gus Bodner of the Toronto Maple Leafs on October 30, 1943 against the New York Rangers. Between 1974-75 and 1986-87, Danny Gare played 827 regular season and 64 playoff games in the National Hockey League with the Sabres, Detroit Red Wings, and Edmonton Oilers. He was shipped to the Motor City on December 2, 1981 in a blockbuster that also sent Jim Schoenfeld, Bob Sove, and Derek Smith to the Red Wings for Mike Foligno, Dale McCourt, and Brent Peterson. 
The Dennis Maruk 1981-82 OPG number 350 hockey card. Written on the back of the card, Dennis was Capitals' leading scorer in 1980-81 and topped the club with 16 power play goals and 5 game winning goals. Dennis was the winner of the Red Tilson Memorial Trophy as OHL's MVP at London in 1974-75. A closer look. Yes, Dennis Maruk was Washington's leading scorer in 1980-81, however it was 1981-82 when he created franchise history. Rook scored 60 goals and assisted on 76 for 136 points. All were untouchable team records for many years. The goal scoring mark has since been erased by Alex Ovechkin, but the assist and point totals remain franchise single season marks. In 1981-82, Dennis was third in goal scoring behind Wayne Gretzky and Mike Bossy. He was fourth in the race for the Art Ross Trophy behind Gretzky, Bossy, and Peter Stasny. 1974-75 was Maruk's third and final season in junior with the London Knights. He scored 66 goals and assisted on 79 for 145 points. He was third in the race for the Eddie Powers Trophy behind Bruce Boudreau of the Toronto Marlboros and Tim Young of the Ottawa 67s. A second round pick by the California Golden Seals at the 1975 NHL Amateur Draft, Dennis Maruk played 888 regular season and 34 playoff games in the National Hockey League between 1975-76 and 1988-89 with the Golden Seals, Cleveland Barons, Capitals, and Minnesota North Stars. The Andre Lacroix 1974-75 OPG WHA No. 60 Hockey Card Written on the back of the card During the 1971-72 season, Andre tallied 11 points for the Chicago Blackhawks. The following season, he scored 124 points for the Philadelphia Blazers. His 235 career points ranks him as the WHA's number one scorer. That gives Andre an average of better than one and a half points per game. He also averaged more than 50 points a season as a regular with the Flyers, spent last fall as a member of Team Canada. A closer look. The Philadelphia Flyers traded Andre Lacroix to the Chicago Blackhawks on October 15, 1971 in exchange for Rick Foley. After three years of scoring 20 or more goals for the Flyers, his 1971-72 season with Chicago made it easy to jump to the World Hockey Association. He appeared in just 51 regular season games for the Hawks, scoring just four goals and assisting on seven. The WHA was a major game changer for Andre. He played in the Rebel League for its entirety from 1972-73 to 1978-79. He led the league in scoring twice, 1972-73 and 1974-75, earning the Bill Hunter Trophy. Lacroix's 798 career points are the most by any WHA player, 132 points more than the next competitor Mark Tardif. He topped out with 147 points for the San Diego Mariners in 1974-75. He was a 50 goal scorer just once in 1972-73 with the Philadelphia Blazers. In all, Andre played 551 regular season and 48 playoff games in the World Hockey Association. He appeared with the Philadelphia Blazers, New York Golden Blades, Jersey Knights, San Diego Mariners, Houston Arrows, and New England Whalers. He also appeared in 325 regular season and 16 Stanley Cup playoff games in the NHL with the Flyers, Blackhawks, and Hartford Whalers. The Dave Gardner 1974-75 OPG No. 47 Hockey Card Written on the back of the card, Dave is typical of the young talent the Blues have acquired in recent years. He came out of the Montreal system after a fabulous junior career with the Toronto Marlboros. His line mates in junior hockey, Billy Harris of the Islanders and Steve Shutt of the Canadians, are now his opponents in the NHL. Dave is a good skater who is known for a keen sense of playmaking ability. A closer look. Dave Gardner played just two years of junior hockey with the Toronto Marlboros but made it count. In his rookie year in 1970-71, Gardner scored 56 goals and assisted on 81 for 137 points. He finished second in the race for the Eddie Powers Trophy, six points behind leader Marcel Dion of the St. Catharines Blackhawks. In 1971-72, Dave's numbers actually dropped slightly to 53 goals and 76 assists for 129 points, playing five less games than the year before. However, Gardner led the league in assists and tied his teammate Billy Harris for the overall scoring lead, sharing the coveted Eddie Powers Trophy. Gardner was picked 8th overall by the Montreal Canadiens at the 1972 NHL Amateur Draft. Teammate Billy Harris was taken 1st overall by the New York Islanders and fellow teammate Steve Shutt was the 4th overall pick by the Habs. After playing sparingly for the Canadians in 1972-73 and the first half of 1973-74, he was traded to the St. Louis Blues on March 8, 1974 for a draft pick. His time with the Blues didn't last long. Gardner was traded to the California Seal just eight games into the 1974-75 season with Butch Williams for Stan Gilbertson and Craig Patrick. 
The bulk of Dave's NHL career was spent with the Golden Seals Cleveland Barons franchise. In all, he appeared in 350 regular season games in the National Hockey League between 1972-73 and 1979-80 with the Canadians, Blues, Seals, Barons, and Philadelphia Flyers. His time with the Flyers was limited to two games in 1979-80. Gardner never played a postseason game in the NHL. The Dave Keon 1969-70 OPG number 51 hockey card. Written on the back of the card, the little man with wings on his skates is one of the NHL's most underrated players. He's a key defensive player and has been in the Maple Leafs chain all the way. Voted playoff MVP when Leafs beat Montreal for the Stanley Cup. A closer look. Certainly not the offensive leader for the Toronto Maple Leafs in the 1966-67 NHL playoffs, Dave Keon was awarded the Conn Smythe Trophy for his all-around play, grit, and leadership. Over 12 postseason games, Keon scored three and assisted on five for eight points. The team was led offensively by Jim Pappen with his seven goals and 15 points. In those 1966-67 playoffs, the Buds met the Chicago Blackhawks in the opening round. In Game 2, Keon scored shorthanded in the first period, assisted by George Armstrong for what would be the game-winning goal. He then assisted on Armstrong's insurance goal in the second period. In the Game 5 of the final against the Habs, Dave had a goal and assist and the Leafs took the series lead 3-2 with a 4-1 win at the Montreal Forum. Toronto would go on to win the series in six games to take what would be their last Stanley Cup championship. Between 1960-61 and 1981-82, Dave Keon played 1,296 regular season and 92 playoff games in the National Hockey League with the Maple Leafs and Hartford Whalers. He also appeared in 301 regular season and 36 playoff games in the WHA between 1975-76 and 1978-79 with the Minnesota Fighting Saints, Indianapolis Racers, and New England Whalers. The Bernie Jeffrey on 1960-61 Parker's number 46 hockey card. Written on the back of the card. Playing his 11th season with the Canadians, Bernie Jeffrey on is a player who oozes color and ability. Won the Rookie Award in 1951-52 and the NHL Scoring Crown in 1954-55. A tough luck guy who has had more than a share of injuries during his career and was able to play a complete season only once. Has one of the hardest shots in the game which can be attested by his 254 goals played on six Stanley Cup championships. A closer look, Bernie Jeffreyon won the Calder Trophy as NHL Rookie of the Year in 1951-52. That year he scored 30 goals and assisted on 24 for 54 points over 67 games for the Montreal Canadiens. He had played 18 regular season and 11 playoff games for the Habs in 1950-51, but was still an eligible rookie. His 30 goals led the team and tied him with Ted Lindsay of the Red Wings for third in the NHL. 1954-55, as referred to on the back of this 1960-61 Parker's hockey card, would be the only year Jeffrey on played the full schedule. Appearing in all 70 games helped him to the Art Ross Trophy with 75 points on 38 goals and 37 assists. This gave him a one-point edge over Maurice Richard and a two-point advantage over Jean Beliveau, all three teammates with Montreal. 1960-61 would turn out to be another great offensive season for Boom Boom. He led the National Hockey League with 95 points, winning the Art Ross Trophy for the second and final time of his career. He also became just the second player in NHL history to reach the 50-goal plateau. In all, Jeffrey on appeared in 883 regular season and 132 playoff games in the NHL between 1950-51 and 1967-68 with the Canadians and New York Rangers. The six-time Stanley Cup champion was inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame in 1972. His jersey number five was retired by the Montreal Canadiens in 2006. The Bill Barber 1974-75 OPG number eight hockey card, written on the back of the card. In two seasons, Bill proved that he is headed for stardom in the NHL. He just missed Rookie of the Year honors, finishing second in 1972-73. Bill has what the scouts call hockey sense. The puck often seems to follow him around. He's a good skater and a very accurate shot. Nine of his goals last year came while the Flyers had a man advantage. A closer look. Bill Barber was indeed the runner-up for the Calder Trophy in 1972-73. Steve Vickers of the New York Rangers took the honor. Bill ha Billy Harris, Jim Schoenfeld, and Dan Bouchard rounded out the top five. Barber scored 30 goals and assisted on 34 for 64 points over just 69 games for the Philadelphia Flyers in his first year. He also spent time in the AHL with the Baltimore Robins and appeared in 11 Stanley Cup playoff games with the Flyers. 
He definitely was destined for stardom, as predicted on the back of the card. Between 1972-73 and 1983-84, Bill played 903 regular season and 129 playoff games in the National Hockey League, all with the Flyers. He had his best season offensively in 1975-76, scoring 50 goals and totaling 112 points. He topped the 40-goal plateau five times and finished with 420 career goals. Barber helped the Flyers win two consecutive Stanley Cup championships in the 1970s. He was inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame in 1990. The same year, his number seven was retired by Philadelphia. That same number is honored in his name by his junior club, the Kitchener Rangers. The Bob Murdoch 1975-76 OPG number 33 hockey card. Written on the back of the card, leading defensive scorer on the Kings last season, never played junior hockey, competing instead for the Canadian national team. A trivia snippet. When was first game played at Detroit Olympia? Answer, November 22nd, 1927, with Ottawa beating Detroit 2-1. A closer look. The 13 goals and 29 assists for 42 points that put Bob Murdoch atop Los Angeles Kings defenseman scoring in 1974-75 would turn out to be career highs. He remained a member of the Kings until a January 16, 1979 trade sent him to the Atlanta Flames for Richard Mulhern. Between 1970-71 and 1981-82, Bob played 757 regular season and 69 playoff games in the National Hockey League with the Montreal Canadiens, Los Angeles Kings, Atlanta Flames, and Calgary Flames. He was part of two Stanley Cup championship teams in Montreal, 1970-71 and 1972-73. Murdoch went on to a coaching career immediately after retiring as a player. He was an assistant and head coach in the NHL between 1982-83 and 1992-93 with the Flames, Chicago Blackhawks, Winnipeg Jets, and San Jose Sharks. He was a Jack Adams Award winner in 1989-90 with the Jets. A look at the trivia snippet. The Detroit Olympia opened on October 15, 1927 and closed on February 21, 1980. On November 22, 1927, the team that would become the Red Wings was still known as the Detroit Cougars. For the Cougars, it was their third game of the season, having won their first on the road against the Pittsburgh Pirates and losing their second to the Boston Bruins in Beantown. Johnny Shepard of the Cougars was the first to score a goal in the new building, assisted by Duke Keats. However, it would be the only goal for Detroit that night in a 2-1 loss to the Senators. Harry Hap Holmes was between the pipes for the home team. Detroit's first win at the new barn came on November 27, 1927, with a 2-0 shutout victory over the Montreal Canadiens. Percy Traub and Carson Cooper scored for the Cougars, with Hap Holmes getting the shutout. The Bob Schmatz 1979-80 OPG number 144 hockey card. Written on the back of the card, Bob scored 15 points in 1977-78 NHL playoff competition for the Bruins. A closer look. Bobby Schmatz was a perfect point per game in 1977-78 for the Boston Bruins. During the regular season, he totaled 54 points while playing just 54 games due to injury. In the postseason, he contributed 15 points in 15 games, tying him for third on the team in playoff scoring with Terry O'Reilly behind Brad Park and Peter McNabb. The Bruins reached the Stanley Cup Final that season before losing in six games to the Montreal Canadiens. Along the way, they swept the Chicago Blackhawks in the opening round and lost just a single game to the Philadelphia Flyers in the semifinal. 1979-80 would prove to be a well-traveled season for Schmatz. He started out with the Bruins, but after 20 games, he was traded to the Edmonton Oilers. His time in Alberta lasted 29 games before another trade sent him to the Colorado Rockies. He finished out the year in Denver, appearing in 20 games while being reunited with former Boston coach Don Cherry. Between 1967-68 and 1980-81, Bob appeared in 764 regular season and 84 playoff games in the National Hockey League. He got a start with the Chicago Blackhawks, but the bulk of his time was spent with the Vancouver Canucks and Boston Bruins. In his final season in the NHL 1980-81, he returned to Vancouver. <laughs> 